Welcome back to this episode of Witching Kitchen. You are currently watching part two of this two-part book review slash recipe video series. If you haven't yet seen part one, please click here now, or please continue watching this video to help me make clove-scented chocolate tattoo cookies. So I am going to put a little bit of my own spin on this tattoo clove-scented chocolate cookie recipe. I am a doTERRA essential oil affiliate and wellness advocate, so I do want to make use of my oils and, you know, get all the benefits from the oils and use them in my cooking and baking as well. So I figured since we were doing clove-scented chocolate cookies, I would use my new clove oil. And this is great for um, teeth and gum health, cardiovascular health, it's great for flavoring your food. So I'm going to use my clove for the cookies, and I'm also going to use a bit of wild orange. Clove and orange, I think, go amazing together. I'm going to also use a little bit of orange zest. So here we go. I'm going to show you the ingredients, and then we'll get to work. First things first, we're going to need some almonds. Um, we're going to need about one cup of these blanched, and I've never blanched anything before. I just looked up the recipe online. It seems simple enough, so I'm going to show you guys how to blanch some almonds as well. First, preheat your oven to 375 degrees. All right, you guys. So here we go. We're going to blanch some almonds. So we need about one cup of raw almonds. And we're going to place the almonds in a bowl. Next, fill a pot with water and place it on high heat and let the water come to a boil. So it looks like our water is just about done. We're now going to pour the water over the almonds and pat them all down, completely submerging them. So we're going to let these almonds sit for about one minute. You don't want to soak the almonds too long or they'll lose their crisp. As you're rinsing them off, you'll notice the skin's already starting to peel off by themselves. So we're going to pat these dry. The skin should come completely off. There you go. And I'll get a little cup here. Okay you guys, so it is about probably a half hour later and I have blanched and peeled my one cup of almonds. And there's all the skins. So this is a very tedious and messy process. And note to self, if I'm ever going to do this recipe again, I'm going to buy the almonds already peeled and chopped. And then I'll just throw them in the oven and toast them. This took a really long time. It's very tedious, very messy. And it wasted about a half an hour, which I could have been using, putting all my other ingredients together and, you know, getting stuff in the oven already. So now that our oven is preheated, we're going to spread our almonds around on a baking sheet and place in the oven for approximately 15 minutes. So it's time to check on my almonds. They look pretty good. I'll cool off for a little bit. After letting the almonds completely cool, place them in a food processor and grind up till they're a fine powder. Take that off. Now we're going to measure out approximately four cups of all-purpose flour. We're now going to add our almonds that we processed in the food processor and add it to our flour and mix thoroughly. Okay, so now it's time to make our chocolate butter mixture here. So I have a medium saucepan on the stove ready to go. I have all my ingredients measured out here. Heat up a saucepan because first we're going to melt about eight tablespoons of butter or one stick. If you're not so into dairy, I use the Earth Balance Vegan Butter, which works as a nice substitute. Next, I'm going to add about two ounces or a quarter cup of my milk chocolate. The recipe calls for semi-sweet, but I like milk chocolate better. We're going to add one cup of milk and whisk until all the ingredients are melted and combined. Again, if you're not into dairy, you can also substitute for almond or coconut milk. One cup of sugar. So you want to add your sugar gradually and whisk in between to prevent clumping. This will also thicken the mixture a bit. Place this on low heat while we make another mixture to add to this. For this mixture, we're going to need one teaspoon of ground cloves, two teaspoons of baking soda, and half a teaspoon of salt. Alright, so here's my cloves baking soda salt mixture. We're going to add this gradually as well, whisking in between to prevent any clumping. This will also thicken the sauce quite a bit. Here's my one lightly beaten egg two to three drops of my clove doTERRA essential oil, maybe three of the wild orange. And this smells like fall, you guys. It smells so good. Now that we are all done whisking all of our ingredients here, this should be lukewarm enough to put over our flour mixture.
Time to really get in here and get dirty, you guys. Use your hands if you need to. This is about all mixed together. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna cover this and place it in the fridge for about an hour. This recipe is kind of a little bit of a pain in the ass, but I'm sure it'll be well worth it in the end. So this is gonna stay in the fridge for approximately one hour. Now it's time to grease our baking sheet and get ready to start forming our little balls of dough. You want to roll between your palms until smooth and then place them about two inches apart on your baking sheet. So now I think we're just about ready to pop these babies in the oven. Preheat your oven to about 375 and place your cookies in the oven for approximately 15 minutes. While those bake, it's time to make our glaze. We're going to need about 12 ounces or a cup and a half of your chocolate, two cups of sugar, one and a half cups of water, and we're going to need two cups of powdered sugar which we are going to sift. The sifting process is extremely important because it's going to prevent our mixture from clumping. Place a new saucepan on the stove and first add your one and a half cups of water. Add your two cups of sugar and start whisking to help the sugar dissolve and to avoid clumping. Once the sugar is completely dissolved, it should leave a caramel clear color, like this. Now it's time to add our chocolate. We want to add a little bit at a time and whisk in between because this will gradually make the sauce thicker. Now use the same gradual adding process with the powdered sugar. I made the mistake of dumping it in with the cup, but you might want to sift it again to avoid clumping. Our cookies might be done. Let's do a toothpick test. If nothing comes out on the toothpick, they're good to go. Once you take those out, place them upon the stovetop and prepare to start coating them in their glaze. You might want to place a drying rack inside your baking pan to catch any glaze that might drip from your cookies. This process does get a little messy. Place a few cookies in the glaze at a time and turn with the fork completely covering the entire surface of each one. When you take them out, place them on your drying rack and let the excess glaze drip off into your baking pan. Now I'm going to add some fresh orange zest to the tops of each cookie. How delicious do these look? I mean, they took a long time, but they're well worth it in the end. Let the glaze dry a bit before serving them to your guests. It's actually time for me to get to the party with you right now. I just finished it. It was really good. Like, there's like a few recipes in the back that that's where you got That's it where from? I got the recipe from. Oh my like God. Beef, mm -hmm. What's the name of them? They're just called the Tattoo Chocolate Clove Cookies. I wanted to say this is a gift for Dave for Oh, how cute! Yeah. 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 Let me see. Yeah. 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 For more information about doTERRA essential oils and to purchase products from my retail page, please visit www.mydoterra.com slash Justina Carubia. If you would like to sign up for a free essential oil class with me or enroll in a wholesale account, please email me at info at